What's up, guys? This is David, a.k.a. Reverse Long. I'm here with Justin Robertson from the But Would You crypto community. Um, as we know from the last podcast, uh, I, 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 Justin actually was teaching me crypto about a year ago, and we did a, a few podcasts. It was a few. It was like four or five, maybe. And we were going over all the crypto stuff. I was going heavy into crypto for a couple of months, trying it out, figuring out how to short Doge. My whole mission at that time was, how do I short this Doge stuff? Uh, because Doge was getting pumped by Elon. And it was like, I was like, this is a sell the news event. Once he goes on SNL, it's over. This thing is, com- this thing is coming down. And it did. And, uh, you know, I was, I was there on the backside of it, but it was a little too late for, for the juicy part. And uh, with all my stock stuff, I decided to put it on the back burner. But it was a good solid one two months of very good crypto education and i learned a lot of stuff that i was i did not know and that's because of justin and my friend alec and some resources in puerto rico so i was able to leverage all that together and get really familiar with uh crypto and even in fact now like with the podcast i've had crypto people on and metaverse and nfts and stuff like that and now tomorrow actually in less than like, like 10 hours, I want to be on a flight to Dubai uh, for a crypto conference. So like, you know, it's it's just crazy how how like things have progressed. I was like super, uh, I wouldn't say anti-crypto, but I was very ignorant on crypto uh, about a year ago. And now look at me, you know, I've come a long way. So, but by, by no means I've gotten like crypto expert, whatever, but I've gotten educated myself enough to be aware and to have some small amounts of of uh, investments in it. And recently, so I, I talked to Justin about how, doing a podcast for recently, um, the whole Luna and Terra and UST ongoing saga. It's like, that's going on. Maybe Justin can clear it up for me because it's very interesting to see like a lot of the crazy volatility on the downside with a lot of these things and the controversy with like UST you know, the tether, you know, so like Justin's going to break all that down and I'm going to ask a few questions here and there and, and I think it'd make a great podcast. So, but yeah, Justin, what's up, man? How's it going? My guy, my guy, what's going on, man? Yeah. You're, uh, you're, I'm glad I could help start your crypto uh, journey and now it's starting to come full circle. Here we are a year later and you're about to go to your first crypto conference. So it's pretty cool. Second crypto conference, actually. Oh, watch out, watch out. Yeah. (laughs) Second, I was in January in like a, uh one in miami is called the what was it called um the north american bitcoin conference you know that one yeah oh yeah 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 i was in that one i was in that one that was great if they had the mayor of miami there they had mark cuban there um at least the bitcoin bull during that didn't they the new uh bitcoin bull that's so that's recently that's another crypto so miami is like a hub now for crypto conferences Mm -hmm. they've turned that place upside down with crypto it's insane but yeah, recently, I think in April, there was another one, another crypto, co- the main one. This is like the really expensive one. It's hard to, you know, hard to get the tickets. The one I was at in January was a little bit smaller. That's where, um, what's his name from, from Ethereum, but Vitalik. Yeah, yeah he, he released Ethereum uh, at that conference like six years ago or something like that. But uh, the one in April is the one where they had that cool bull, the, the robotic bull. And I think it's still there. It's pretty cool. But yeah. Yeah, I thought that was really cool. But but yeah, David, thanks for uh, inviting me on. I know that uh, you know, you're the friendly bear, big on the short side. So one of the biggest shorts in uh, you know, in recent crypto memory was Terra Luna. So I know you had a few questions. Um I kind of threw t- together a quick like PDF to to break down as best I could as we go through it. But um but yeah, should I just hop on into it? Yeah, so so I know some with my vague understanding was that Luna they pulled the rug on this thing or something like that. It's like no, completely I, crashed. So no, Luna wasn't a rug pull per se. Um, a lot of cryptocurrencies, like uh, maybe about like a year and a half ago, almost two years ago, there was something called Iron Finance. Um, that's Mark Cuban kind of got caught up in that, and that was an actual rug pull, right? Where the project just like straight up dips off with the money. Um, so this wasn't the same as that. This was a little bit more sophisticated and, and we'll kind of get into how it came about. All right, cool. Yeah, go for it. Uh, educate us. <laughs> um, yeah, so what's up, everybody? Appreciate you guys watching. My name is Justin. Um, but we're just a little crypto community I, I 
founded to bring people together that are like-minded to try to get an edge in the market. So um, if you want, go ahead and give me a follow on Twitter, at Butwoodja, on Instagram, at Butwoodja. And if you'd like, you can join the Discord. Um, but as I get into this, we're going to be talking about Terra Luna, as we already said. So first, I'm going to touch on like what Terra Luna is, um, how the protocol is kind of made up, then the situation that led to the uh, big demise, the big fall that's recently played out. So without further ado, I'll go ahead and hop into it. And then David, you know, feel free to stop me at any point. Some of the some of this is a little um, complex. So if at any point, just, you know, give me a shot. Absolutely. And kind of go through it. But, For sure. Right, so the first thing, Terra Luna, right? So what is Terra Luna? You can see the definitions here on, on, on the screen there, but I'm going to give this in layman's terms. So you guys can read along, um, but I'm actually going to kind of give my own wording here. So Terra and Luna. Terra is the stable coin for Luna, the protocol, right? So Luna is a layer one blockchain. Basically a layer one blockchain, you are building things on top of the blockchain, right? So think of, um, you know, you have an iPhone, well, you need apps for your iPhone, right? So a layer one blockchain would be the iPhone and the, then the apps would be called dApps, decentralized apps that are built on the blockchain, right? As people use your dApps on the blockchain, they have to submit transactions and they're verified on the blockchain. Okay, so now that we know that, Terra Luna is a layer one blockchain. Terra represents the stable coin side of Terra Luna, and Luna represents the native token, right? So Luna is the actual blockchain. Terra is the stable coin. It's actually a few different stable coins, but we're going to talk about UST, US Terra in specific. Alrighty, so now that you know that, you're already one big step ahead of most people. Um, and you guys can kind of read through here. I'll leave it on the screen just for a minute, or you guys can uh, pause as we go through here, but... This kind of talks about how the protocol works. Um, essentially, it's an algorithmic-based stablecoin, right? So it's always pegged to the value of $1. So Terra, again, that's the stablecoin side. UST is supposed to be pegged to $1. So one Terra uh, UST is always supposed to equal $1. And it's an algorithmically-backed stablecoin, meaning that if it ever depegs, if it ever goes above $1 or goes below $1, there's an algorithm that kicks in and start sending out functions to bring the price either back up to $1 or back down to $1. So simple as that. So hopefully everyone is with me so far. Um, now, this is uh, where it kind of starts to get a little blurry, but but not too much if you kind of just slow down and really take it for what it's worth. So I'm actually am going to read this part. It's a little bit important. So, so one second, Justin. So like when it, the algorithm brings it to $1 back and forth, is it like burning stuff and like burning supply and like buying and so like how, how does that work that always confused me so so for example with stocks i see a lot of times manipulation happening with and it's like algor algorithm algorithmic driven volume that like manipulates the stock like which is insane you know uh <laughs> you know so like is how do, so like yeah. how, there's just no rules in 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 crypto so they're allowed to do this kind of stuff that's like manipulation actually um, yeah, there's a few different um, algorithmically backed stable coins like uh, Dai and a few others. But so as you go through the white paper, you start to understand how Terra's um, algo is supposed to kick in and work. And I'll actually, if we, I'm gonna read through right here, and you'll you'll get a better yeah, yeah. understanding of it. So, uh, so when there is expansion, right? So expansion meaning that Terra, the stable coin, goes above its peg, so it's higher than that one dollar. What the protocol incentivizes is they incentivize users to burn Luna. And when you burn Luna, it mints Terra, okay? So just think of it as, okay, I'm going to burn my Luna and that is going to give me Terra, okay? And then, so why would you do that? If the price of Terra is above $1 and I burn my Luna, I get Terra creating more supply, aka dilution. So it dilutes itself back down to one dollar. Pretty you still with me there? Yeah. And then like when when it gets to if it gets under one dollar, then it like exactly the reverse happens. So and if it gets so if the peg is under one dollar, right? So now Terra is trading under one dollar, I can now burn Terra, reducing the supply, increasing the price, and that will give me more Luna. So when you, it's backed one to one, right? So if I, if Luna is trading at $100 and I burn one Luna, how much UST will I get? 
100, right? Because it's one to one, right? So if Luna is trading at $100, the price of Luna is 100. So one Luna equals 100. So you would get 100 UST for your one Luna. And again, the reason why they're going to give you that Luna or that UST is because you're burning one of the opposite sides. So that's how that peg works. So just a brief, quick summary for anyone that maybe went over your head there. If the peg of Terra is below $1, we need to raise that back to a dollar. How do we do that? We burn our Terra, thus creating more Luna. And in doing so, burning that Terra reduces the supply, right? So with the reduced supply, that will increase the price, but it increases the supply of Luna. So hopefully that, that kind of broke down how that function works. So you can kind of just think of it as like a spinning wheel, right? At the top, you're going to go ahead and buy. And I have a, a quick picture um, that kind of breaks it down here. But I want us to kind of go through what uh, the definitions so, of how the protocol works before we get to that. So before you get there, so, so basically you can create money out of thin air and just say keep burning it and, and like, you know, doing all this to balance it out. Well, like, technically, you're not creating money out of thin air because you are burning value for value, right? So you're burning the UST right? You're burning the dollar equivalent. So they're saying, well, if I'm taking out UST, then it's okay to give Luna. So you're just changing the supplies. So it's like having, you know, if you have two children, you know what I mean? And you want to feed one of them, but you don't want to feed the other one. You're like, oh, well, I'll just take some of that food out of you. And when I take that food out of you, it automatically gives it to you, right? It's just, so the think of the two protocols, that see. Each, the two children of it. And when you move one, remove one, it gives it to the other. So that's essentially how it works. And here's a great example, actually. Um, and they break this down right in the white paper. So if one UST is trading at $1.01, users can use the market swap feature of Terra Station. So this is called a seniorage swap. So you can use a seniorage swap. And when you use that seniorage swap, the market burns one US dollar of Luna and mints one UST, which is pegged to the dollar, right? So users can then sell their one UST for 101, profiting one cent, through arbitrage and that also would add to that pool and then that would continue to happen until the price falls back to meet that peg and so that's like a, that, that's the same example that we just went through whether it's you know at 99 cents and it needs to go up or it's at a dollar one cent and it needs to go down so that was the the biggest takeaway there um and if you can wrap your head around that then it's pretty smooth sailing for the rest of the way the other part of the terra luna protocol is that when you have a blockchain, you need something called validators, right? So if I send you, David, five Luna, who's going to validate that I actually have five Luna? Who's going to validate that it went to the proper address? Who's going to validate that you now have that Luna, right? So those are called miners. The miners mine blocks on the blockchain. And when they do that, unless it's proof of stake, um, same situation, though. And when they do that, they get paid a, a reward. One other thing to note, though, in that swappage platform, when you burn that Luna for UST, 0.5% gets burned automatically. So half a percent um, gets burned automatically. So that's something to be aware of. So as we go through here, you can bond Luna, you can unbond Luna. Um, unbonded Luna can be freely traded. So think about like we were speaking previously um, on another call, and it was in regards to how companies have their privately held shares that are not publicly traded, right? So you can think of bonded Luna as that. If it's bonded, it can't be publicly traded. If it's unbonded, it can be publicly traded. All righty. Um, okay, so that covers that. The seniorage is a big deal. This is kind of what also played a huge part into the protocol. So let me get, to, oops, I'm sorry. Here's that slide here for phases of Luna. If it's unbonded versus bonded, and during the unbonding period. Another big thing here is that when you go to unbond your Luna and you go to be able to sell it onto the free market, there's a 21-day lockup period. So I've, uh, I've mentioned this before. And David, uh, actually calling back, I listened to a little bit of our podcast from uh, over a year ago, and I spoke about DeFi protocols, and I spoke about Anchor being able to earn 20%, and I spoke about not going into protocols that specifically lock up you know, your tokens for a long period of time. So this is an exact, exact, exact example. We actually spoke about this. We spoke about Anchor Protocol. So we spoke about this. I got I to gotta check that out. Uh, wow, which one was that? Do you remember the, I think we did like uh, three or four. 
yeah we did three or four but it was, i believe it was the second one when we, st when we started talking about DeFi. so um wow you, okay uh, yeah that's actually a great point It'd be great to re revisit those after a year yeah so uh um, same but but i don't want to get too off track so when we're talking yeah. about this um the senior age hopefully i spelled this right the senior age is the value of a coin minus the cost of its production okay so what is that the value of the token minus its production so this is just breaking down further in order to mint that ust an equal value of luna needs to be burned right so that's the same thing we we're saying if you if uh, luna is trading at 100 dollars, then one luna needs to be burned to get 100 ust in terra's protocol seniorage mechanism a percentage of offered luna aka a percentage of the burned amount can be recaptured as seniorage revenue by sending it to a specified pool before burning don't need to worry about that because this happened with the upgrade since the columbus 5 main net upgrade all seniorage in the terra protocol is burned so that half a percent is automatically burned. So it's automatically wiped off out of the ecosystem. So be aware of that. So what happened here was a high level attack. There was a high level attack and people were able to read into this and they said, okay, well, if you can raise enough money, then you can pull off an attack and these are the steps of how you would do it. So I broke down this, uh, oops, so here's seniorage, it's going over just the cost of production and then this was a tweet uh, that Freddie Reynolds put out, and I tagged him on here just to make sure I gave everyone their props. So, Freddie, if you see this, shout out to you, my guy. And also, you guys can give him a follow if you'd like. Um, but through these steps, right, through steps one through nine, I'm going to kind of read through them. And with ne now knowing what you know about how the Terra Luna protocol works, you'll probably be able to start to understand where everything came from here. So this is how the attack happened and now there's rumors that it was blackrock capital as well as citadel um the ken griffin uh investment firm that were the ones behind this attack i don't know how true that is i don't know if it's true at all that's just some rumors that are on the crypto streets all right david so first thing you would do if we had if we wanted to take down terra luna we wanted to depeg ust this is how we could do it while also making an insane amount of money while doing it now we have to have an insane amount of money to pull this off so this is uh, really interesting. Okay. <laughs> okay. So, um, and if you get a little confused, let me know. Um, okay. I have the other, I have the other slide, but the other one's a little bit busier. So I figured we'd start with this one and kind of go to that one. So the first step would be is you long $100 million worth of Luna. Okay. So if I'm on, you know, whatever I'm on, uh, Binance and I'm trading, I do a hundred million dollar long of Luna. So now I'm in a position long a hundred million for Luna. The next thing I do is I purchase $100,000 of Luna and immediately exchange it to UST using that Terra seniorage mechanism, right? And I do that 10,000 times. And I know it sounds crazy to think like, okay, you're going to buy $100,000 of Luna and swap it in the UST using the Terra seniorage mechanism 10,000 times. Like what? That doesn't, but you know, it's the computer. We have bots. We have scripts that we can write to automatically execute these things. So actually doing it isn't that big of a deal. You just have to have the capital. Alrighty, so now that you have, you've, now that you purchase $100,000 um, of Luna 10,000 times, right? And then you swap that 100,000 uh, 100, times 10,000 into the UST, you'll get a total of 500 million UST. All right, so remember when we just created I'm sorry, when we just swapped our Luna to our UST, we essentially burnt the Luna and created uh, more UST. So that's how we got that 500 million of UST. Then you would sell your initial 100 million from step one. So remember, we have a long position on Luna already. So our long position would now be up money. Because of why? Because we burned that Luna to create UST. So we went long, so we have a long already sitting in, so our long position is in. We then buy $500 million worth of Luna on open markets. We swap that $500 million on open markets to US UST. In doing so, we uh, burn the Luna, we create the UST. Obviously, if we're burning $500 million of Luna on the open market, that's going to cause the price to go up estimate about 20 to 30 percent so now you just have a hundred million dollar long on luna from step one that we're talking about here that's up 30 percent 
All righty. So now we're sitting, um, you know, we have that long, that's already up money. We have $500 million um, sitting in UST. And now we're on to step four. So once we get to step four, we're going to use anchor protocol. So this is where it might get a little confusing because people that, people that don't use DeFi are going to be a little confused. But anchor protocol is a DeFi uh, app, right? And what is DeFi decentralized finance? They offer 20% uh, returns per year on their stable coin, meaning that you could put in, you know, $100,000 worth of UST in, in uh, 12 months, you would get back, you know, $120,000 worth of UST. So it's pretty, pretty insane, right? A lot of people are calling their Ponzi because they were like, how can you offer 20% yields? That's, you know, unheard of. Besides that, Anchor Protocol just need to know that it's a DeFi protocol. So what you can do, we talked about having the bonded methods in there. So you can bond ETH, you can bond Luna, you can use that DeFi protocol to bond to it. And again, when we, uh, oh, let me pull it up. Remember the bonded Luna, that's gonna be staked to a validator. So once it's bonded, once it's bonded, then it can't be used, right? It can't be used on the open market. So although Luna bonded to validators and Terra Station can't be traded freely, Bonded Luna is a token that represents Bonded Luna that can be traded freely. So when you give someone your Luna and they give you back Bonded Luna, you can now trade that Bonded Luna, but your original Luna is locked up. So don't want to get too uh, off topic there, but just understand that you can put in Bonded tokens and then you can still trade and sell those Bonded tokens. Okay, so a quick recap. We're only on step four and we already have to do a quick recap, right? So we went long, 100 million, first thing we did. We go into Binance, we say, all right, 100 million long on Luna. Next thing we do, we take $500 million worth of Luna, we take it out of an exchange, we use the uh, senior swap mechanism. In doing so, we burn that Luna, we create the UST. Now we have $500 uh, million worth of UST. Next step, we go ahead and cut our uh, long, right? Because again, because we burned that Luna to get that 500 million UST, that would have caused the price of Luna to go up so you would have made money on that long from step one. Now, now we've made money from the step um, from the long on step one. We are now holding 500 million in UST, and we're moving on to our next step, where we would actually take 200 million dollars worth of bonded ETH into Anchor Protocol and take out a loan. So you can take out loans, right? So you can take out up to 50% loans. So if I give you 200 million dollars worth of ETH, you can give me 100 million dollars worth of UST. All right, so now we're at a total of how much for the people listening? I know it's a little confusing. 600 million UST, right? So we got the 500 million from when we first swapped the Luna. We now have the 100 million from the loan that we took out. We have 600 million UST. Now we go back to our, um, our trading platform, whatever we're using, like Binance, and now we short Luna 100 million. So we already closed out our long, and now we are short Luna. Now we're gonna do the exact same thing, guys. Just like we burned Luna to inflate the price of Luna because we're long, now we are gonna short Luna, and what do you think we're gonna do? We're gonna increase the, uh, the supply of Luna to make the price go down, right? So Justin, this reminds me, okay, so with stocks, you have this thing called an offering. You, ever, you know about this? So the stock, they will, they, like, let's say AMC, they're, they need cash. They don't have much cash to survive. So they they need to go make a deal with the with the investment bank to get an offering going and get financing. And then they will shell they will sell shares for a discounted price and then dump it. And that will cause a lot of dilution. So by increasing the share amount, it's it's uh it lowers the price. So, so uh you know it's, it's dilution. Like, it's baked in, exactly. It's baked in. And the thing that people need to realize here is that it's baked in and it's an algorithmically backed stablecoin. So it's all computer code. It's not someone doing it. So when these, when these things happen, they're just executing, executing, executing. Yeah. Right? So it's, it's already baked in. But you're exactly right, David. If you have anything and you increase the supply, right? The, it's gonna, then, but to see, so with stocks, a lot of times that somebody that knows will short it ahead of the, the, the dilution. So they know it's exactly, coming. And that's exactly what step one and step five in this diagram show. That's so exactly right. that's crazy. So like, did they, did somebody just, let's say Ken Griffith, I don't know, whatever. 
he he had a team of people and they're they just came up with this thesis with all this that you just mentioned and they're like hey we just figured out how to crack this thing and well well so this tweet that i put down here um is why wouldn't they because if, if that works if what you said like if if the theory no, no not if why would they not do it this is exactly what happened. It's not if this works. This, yeah. this is what happened. This is me. I wasn't smart enough to figure this out. I'm yeah, yeah. picking up the breadcrumbs after. But yes, you're exactly right. It's like, why would they not do you, it? Yeah, if you know you can make a crazy <laughs> amount of money, it's like, why wouldn't you? And the yeah. crazy thing is, the only reason it wouldn't work is because you would assume that no one had the amount of capital to make it. Not that no one had the amount of capital to make it work, but like, you know, who's raising $600 million to do this? Well, people that have $600 million, right? Yeah. So, we can kind of um, cruise through the, the, the last parts of this because I see that you're, you're really catching on. But that's exactly right. So now the same steps one through four are kind of just repeated, to, but in reverse. So now you short, you go to your um, brokerage or you go to your exchange, you short Luna $100 million worth. And then in that same thing, you, in $100,000 chunks, you use the seniorage again to convert that $500 million. Because remember, we accumulated $600 million UST. And what happens, David, when you burn UST? Supply goes lower. But what happens for Luna? Supply it's, goes higher. Supply right? goes higher. So the Luna's going to go down. UST is going to go up. It's, exactly. So if I put in $100 million short and now I have $600 million UST, all I have to do is go back to the senior brokerage platform, swap that into Luna, and now automatically Luna's supply has just increased by $600 million. So obviously that's going to dilute it. It's going to draw, cause it to come down. Um, and then, so I'm sorry, I'm going to keep reading here. So in $100,000 chunks, you use the seniorage again to convert that 500 million UST plus that 100 million. So the total of six, 600 million to Luna, right? So now you're taking 600 million, swapping it into Luna. After each conversion, you then dump and sell the Luna. So not only, not only are you diluting Luna's supply, you're also dumping all the shares you have. So just like you were saying in that off, um, the offerings example, so spot on. Um, next, what you would do is you close the Luna short in step five, right? So you, you shorted Luna now that you did all the damage and created all that extra supply and you dumped all the supply onto the market. You then close your short. Um, let's say you make another 30% profit from that. Then you go back and you pay back that loan, right? Because you, got the, you had the 500 million um, from step two and then you have the 100 million from step four. But that 100 million, remember, you took a loan out, you borrowed against it. But so now you go back, you pay your loan back, you get your um, 200 million worth of uh, bonded ETH back. And then you can see here, step nine, you repeat after a few iterations, the protocol will collapse at step six. So exactly what you said. And um, wow, did you not see this the whole time? No, I saw it. I'm looking at it, step one through nine. Um, yeah, okay. So. So that's basically how it's done. And I have that same uh, thing kind of pulled up here. So in this, this is just kind of a, a better graphic, but you can pull all the important information on the top left. You have seniorage and what you need to know about seniorage, it burns half a percent. Um, on the top right, you have one Luna equals one UST. So if Luna equals $100, one Luna equals 100 UST. And then if you just follow the numbers here, first, just look at the red circles. When you burn UST, you meant Luna. And when you burn Luna, you meant UST. So that's easy enough to follow along. This part is the same exact, exact thing said, just broke down here. So the first step, $100 million long Luna. Second step, buy 100,000 of Luna, swap to UST. Um, repeat that 10,000 times. Third step, sell your initial 100 million Luna from step one. So now you close your long, boom, you made 30% on 100 million. Deposit 200 million worth of bonded ETH into Anchor Protocol. So now you have you, in step two, that gives you 500 million UST. In step four, that gives you the extra 100, that gives you 600 million total ust after you have your 600 million total ust you then short luna you put in a hundred uh short position after you put it in your short position that's when you take that ust you swap it all back to luna creating so much more supply then you go into the open market in step seven you dump it all back onto the open market in step eight you pay back that bonded eth loan and now you've just um literally collapsed an entire protocol while making a significant significant amount in doing so so interesting. Wow, man, you broke it down pretty clear for such a complex kind of mind boggle thing. Um, yeah, it is a little difficult to like fully wrap your head around, but um, but that's yeah. I mean, the concept is pretty clear. All right, so check it out. A few things here. All right, so with crypto, like the whoever did this, uh, they can't really be considered the bad guy 
I mean, like this is when you have loopholes like that, they're going to be taken advantage of. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's the thing. So with algorithmically uh, backed stable coins, it kind of gives someone incentive to figure out. It's kind of like a video game. Like, can I beat the video game? Right. Can yeah. I figure out a way to get around whatever's going on here? And I mean, it was clear as day in the white paper. Um, you know, I I really liked Luna. I was a fan of the protocol, but I, I wasn't paying close enough attention. Um, and you know, when you don't pay attention, you get burned, right? So it was right in the white paper. As you're reading through it, it tells you the protocol. But I guess for me anyway, when, when you're not dealing with those large sums of money, um, I didn't kind of see it as an option. But now, like, you know, looking back, hindsight's 2020, it was like, oh, yeah, someone just came in with, you know, half a billion, a billion dollars and was able to manipulate, not manipulate the system, but in a way manipulate the system, you know? See, um, crypto has no no rules for that. So it's like, it's like free for all almost because i know with stocks if someone were to come because theoretically uh like a low float we were talking about low float so last time if a float is 1.5 million somebody with 1.5 million dollars can technically buy the float or buy like a huge chunk of the float and control the supply and demand right. you know it's, but it's not allowed so that we have the sec supposedly they're the ones but they they have their hands tied with with a lot of bigger companies now with exactly. crypto with crypto, there's no rules. So you, there's no SEC. It's the Wild Wild West. And there I you go. <laughs> um, but yeah, yeah, Elizabeth Warren. Elizabeth Warren is like really big on trying to regulate stable coins. So there's a there's a big conspiracy theory amongst the the crypto enthusiasts that all this was done to help regulators regulate stable coins. That actually it was BlackRock and it was Citadel, and they did work in um, you know cooperation to bring down terra luna to bring this down because the funny thing there's a lot of rippling effects for this too that um you know i don't even we don't even have to kind of touch on but just know that they are out there um and one of the rippling effects is that doquan had actually previously uh filed a lawsuit against the u.s government so he actually sued the u.s government he's a um a, uh lives in korea um so he actually he's a korean citizen so he actually sued the u.s government because they were trying to stop him and infringe infringe on his like protocol previously, so he already had like a funny background with the U.S. government. So it's that's like a little hmm. Okay, maybe for the conspiracy theorists out there. And then also there was multiple, multiple, multiple companies. And actually, if you just do a quick like Google search, even um, you can find multiple companies that were depositing funds into Anchor Protocol and promising their whoever ten percent returns and keeping ten percent on top. So, you know, this there is a big rippling effect that happened for different um, platforms. And now Doquan's uh, company is under investigation in Korea. There's several, several other firms out there that actually had funds in um, in Anchor Protocol. And, you know, they it all went to zero. So there is, you know, a lot of money. Um, the total, the TVL, total value locked inside of D5 protocols was 220 221 million a um, billion 221 billion in just two months ago back in march and now the total value locked is 109 billion so that 100 billion was mostly came out from terra luna which is pretty insane to say right there right so it is kind of unfortunate you had people's entire you know life savings and a lot of people got wiped out from this um but it's i guess at the end of the day it is part of the game right we all know risking uh risking <laughs> uh, investing is incredibly risky so it's like yeah now with Tether, it's like I don't know. It was like when, last year when I when I got familiar with it, I was I thought stable coins is really less risk. Actually, it's, it's better than sitting in a bank account. You have it in a stable coin. It's supposed to be, but crypto is inherently risky, right? So it's like stable coins are supposed to be less risk. Like USDC, everyone is pretty you know comfortable sitting in USDC, but like USDT, the thing is that not all stable coin companies are transparent with their backing. So USDC actually has a platform where you can send them. X amount of crypto and they or X amount of USDC tokens and they send you US dollars back like fiat, right? So it's back, they're officially back one to one, which is of course what you want. But like USDT, like Tether, for example, they are backed by uh, paper assets like stocks um, as well as a basket of other assets, right? So, you know, if there's a bank run and if stocks are down, right? Like if you, like if you had, you know, half your, um, what do they call it? Your treasury. If you had half your, half your treasury sitting in, you know, Anchor, in Netflix, in Facebook, and, you know, Amazon, right? And then someone, and then you have a bank run, 
you can't have paper <laughs> excuse me you can't have paper backed assets because if you have a bank run it's, it's really hard to get everyone out if they're trying to get out so it's a it's a really big thing um i honestly crypto probably does need some regulation right it's it probably can't all it, the wild wild west does have to come to an end at some point um it's just unfortunate to see it happen this way yeah um because it sounds like that's like an arbitrage what do you call it um opportunity but it's it's only like that for like well, someone with a massive amount of money yeah it's an arbitrage opportunity but it's also like an artificial arbitrage because you created the arbitrage so that's what I, uh, I and I said this in another video I covered this once um, previously and it's basically you know that's what it's hard to call it right like you can you blame the person for doing it like hey if you they see crack billion, the code yeah if you see a billion dollars sitting there and you know how to figure out how to get it you know what are yeah you know? you know um with people there's always if there's a, a loophole in there someone's gonna figure it out you know like for example Robin Hood. Someone figured out how to do like unlimited leverage when, when there was a couple of years ago for options. Oh, um, okay. You know, we got this. I was just in a DOS trader competition. I don't know if you saw like a, it's like a simulated paper trading competition. I was one of the top people in it, but like it was really annoying. It was really annoying, though, because like it, it shows your real time trades. And so somebody cracked it. It's, it's a fake account. So like, that's not going to get that person anywhere as far as being a trader. Cause like when you trade real money, you can't do that. But he was just copying every, the top traders trades on there uh, uh, yeah. second by second. So he figured out a way just to but duplicate the trade, yeah, but well, without a script, just, he was just watching the trade. So if I entered short a position, he entered short the same amount of shares, but he, he tried his best to have a little tiny bit better average, like one cent or two cent. Cause like, when I'm go going for the trade, I figured out my thesis. I put it in the block order, and that's I'm waiting for the thing to play out. Now, if he does the same thesis, and I'm a little sloppy with my entries because, like, I know but the the bigger picture is what I'm looking for. But he, if end result, yeah. So, and I'm usually sloppy with my entries. So, if, if he's able, the other person's able to get a slightly better entry, he's gonna beat me every time on my own they're trade. Out trade you, but they're yeah, you. exactly. And at the same time, if they're if they're like uh, hitting the trade the same second or a few seconds. Mm -hmm. So yeah. it's almost like an algorithm. So like, or a bot, yep. Or a bot. So like if, if, if there's an opportunity, like someone's going to figure it out, you know what I mean? Always. And uh, it's crazy. Cause I'm, I'm whoever created this stuff was probably thinking yeah, it's going to take so much money to crack this. I'm not going to worry about it. And then look what happens. Ken Griffith yeah. comes through. <laughs> exactly, exactly. And, and like, um, you know, it is more of a rumor. Like, we don't know. Like, we can't confirm, like, if that, like, those were the people behind it. But, you know, that is a lot of a lot of money just to, to kind of throw into there. Um, and it was written about in November. So I actually like to, to be fully transparent. Um, like I said, that guy, uh, Frankie Reynolds, he wrote a Twitter thread about this happening. And that I pulled a lot of I pulled all the information before it happened. That. On, in November, he wrote about this happening. He said, if someone wanted to depeg Terra Luna, this is how you would do it. And I just read you that little step thing that those were his steps. You know, with with with, with trading and, and being in Puerto Rico, I, I noticed this too, with trading and like with markets, it, you got to keep things secret. So when things go out like that, somebody is always watching. Like in Puerto Rico, I saw some whales. You would never know they existed, but they're in all the chat rooms on the background under some random username they call, them, they call them lurkers the lurkers yeah you, you would never know and like I, I i'm active in the chat room we, uh what do you call it uh interacting with everybody we're all having fun in there and there's some whale with like a hundred million dollars shorting the whole chat room shorting you know all you guys all you guys yeah are hype. <laughs> He's yeah no and that that really is real that's not theory I, i've seen it in person um you know, so like when, when someone posts like that, there's always someone to watch, even though you think because I guess like you and I are like we came into trading like and, and markets and from like a normal background. We we're, we're not like finance experts or whatever in the industry of banks and all that. But like, you know, there's always someone watching. And when you think it, it's, it's far fetched and it's not going to happen, it can happen, man. There's someone watching. and It's like, wow, this guy, this uh, his name's Frankie. What's the name? Frank Freddie? Reynolds, yep. Frankie Reynolds, like he posted that theory up, but someone might have been like, you know what? I think let's let's try let's try this yeah. theory, man. Let's do well, it. 
Well, think about it. Like if you have one of like if you're a whale, just like just like you said, if you have a whale sitting in a chat room, that whale probably has a small team of people. No, yeah, not, exactly. You know, exactly. If, if they're not his his uh, employees, then maybe just even his you know close friends or confidants. So you know, one of you have a group of whales, five five whales, and one of them sends that tweet <laughs> to their group chat, and they're like, "Yo, you're like, let's do it." Yeah, the like, theory. You pull this off. Yo, hit up my quant. I got a quant analysis. Uh, quant analysis. from MIT. Yeah, exactly. from MIT. Tell him to read this and tell and run the model and tell me if it'll actually work. The quant calls him back twenty minutes. Yeah, that'll work. I'm like, all right, guys, I got two hundred million on it. Who else? Who else was a pitcher? That's it. Yeah. So I guess you know, you know, it's like crypto is gonna get regulated one way or another. Maybe not as much or as as like stocks or whatever. I don't think it ever can get like that. But um, I don't, I don't think it hits stocks level. But I mean, it does need some regulation. I, I'm still a yeah. fan of decentralization, um, and I I'll always will be. But there's a time and a place, kind of like for everything, right? So like, just be if you're gonna use blockchain technology, I think it should be decentralized. But I don't think everyone that is going to eventually use blockchain technology will use decentralized blockchains. Um, so the regulation is is welcome to bring in mass adoption. I, I start I'm thinking at this point, and I think a lot of people are kind of leaning towards that as well. They're like, hey, if we really want to grow crypto to um, a multi trillion dollar market cap, which it is, and it has it is and it has been, but like I'm talking about tens tens of trillions, um, like the market cap of gold or something, then you know there's gonna have to be some type of regulation because if this were happening to, I mean, so many people were already affected, but imagine if crypto was at a larger scale than it already is. You can't yeah. continue to have these things happen. So yeah, uh, interesting. But the whole play, the whole thing is a is a good case study, if anything, you know. And uh, to yeah. see that the stable coins, you still you, you risk. You're still taking a risk of whatever you do. So there's always yeah. risk. Even if you're just holding the U.S. dollar in your bank account, right? Like, yeah, that's a risk too. Like that's a risk too, right? Uh, have yeah. You read, have you read or watched Changing World Order by Ray Dalio? Um, that's the latest book he has, right? Yeah, yeah, it's really good. It's or really good. I I read Principles. The yeah, changing, I, I, I got I got to read the Changing World Order. I'm I'm a big fan of Ray Dalio. Yeah, so he, he, uh, so he has a book out and he has like a 45 minute uh, recap on YouTube about it as well, which is pretty good. Um, so I suggest it to all the the watchers and listeners out there if you haven't seen it or heard it yet. Sounds good. Cool. Well, Justin, thanks for breaking all that down, man. Any any more thoughts? Any last thoughts on that? Um, no, that, that's really it. Uh, if you guys enjoyed the info, go ahead and do a drop a subscribe on my YouTube channel at Bud or give me a follow on Twitter. And uh, other than that, David, I appreciate you having me on, man. Absolutely, man. We'll, we'll keep in touch and do more of these, man. It's great to keep in contact with you once again. All right, brother. If I don't talk to you uh, before you leave out, have a safe flight to Dubai and uh, can't wait till the next time. Absolutely, man. All right, Justin. Have a good weekend, bro. Later.